Okay, welcome back. Um, this is Mr. Hassan's math channel, <clears throat> and this is question number three from the June October 2020 Mechanics M1 paper. And this question here is about statics. It's got um, a particle of mass 10 kilograms is placed on a fixed rough inclined plane. So we know that we're going to have to deal with friction here. The plane is inclined to the horizontal at an angle alpha, where tan of alpha is 3 over 4. The particle is held in equilibrium by a force of magnitude p newtons, which acts up the plane as shown in figure 1. The line of action of the force lies in a vertical plane that contains a, a line of greatest slope of the plane. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is 1 over 2, a half. Find the normal reaction between the particle and the plane. Now the first thing, I'm going to deal with the diagram down here because I can show more working down here easier. So let me just, um, I've taken a copy of that diagram, make it slightly bigger. Okay, so what, what I'm going to show here is the force is acting on this particle first. So the force is acting on this particle. You have its weight, which acts vertically downwards. Let me make that a bit thicker, actually. Its weight, which acts vertically down. Okay, so its weight acts vertically down. Sorry about this, being a bit fussy. Okay, that's its weight acting vertically down. Okay, its weight, its mass is 10 kilograms, so its weight is 10 G newtons. 10 G. That doesn't mean grams, that means G. G, the uh, acceleration due to gravity. It's 10 times 9.8, basically. So 10 G newtons is its weight. Then you have um, the force P, which is, it, which is basically pushing it up. Okay, it's kind of holding it up. So what I'm going to do here is I don't like when the force is on, the, on, on the, this side. I prefer to draw the force on the other side. So I'm going to draw the P like this. Okay, so I'm going to draw, and I'm going to get rid of this. Whoops. Make it white. Get rid of this. Okay, so the same P that was acting on th that side, I'm going to draw in that this side, and I'll explain why. I just prefer to draw it in this way. So if I re-draw draw the diagram, I'll draw the P over here instead of where it was before. It's acting in the same direction, it's the same magnitude, no problem, I can just do that. It just makes it a bit easier for me. And I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, and it says, um, the plane is inclined to the particle held in equilibrium by a force of magnitude P newtons, which acts up the plane. The line of action of the force lies in the vertical plane that contains a line of greater slope. Okay, now, first of all, let's deal with this tan theta business. This tan theta equals three quarters. So, when we and carry on to solve the problem. We're going to resolve forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. And we're going to use sine alpha and we're going to use cosine alpha in our calculations. And they gave us tan alpha. Now what we could do is we could find out the value of alpha by using inverse tan of three quarters. But that's going to give us an angle which we have to round to a certain degree of accuracy. And then when we use that angle, when we find the sine of that angle, the answer won't be as precise as if we did the following. If I know tan theta equals 3 quarters, I can say to myself, okay, that's like a, a right angle triangle. I think I made that wrong, I made that white, didn't I? It's so like a right angle triangle. Okay, just one second. You could say you could have a right angle triangle. If this is alpha and the tan of alpha is 3 over 4, uh, we know that the hypotenuse of this is going to be 5 by Pythagoras. So I can say that the sine of alpha is going to be opposite over hypotenuse and the cosine of alpha is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. These are exact values which I can use in my calculations, which, you know, um, you know they're not rounded, so it will make my life a lot easier, especially sometimes they ask you to give exact Value. So I know sine alpha is three fifths and cosine alpha is four fifths, and that's going to help us uh, a lot. Okay. Now it says that um, 
the line of action of force in a, lies in a vertical plane that contains a line of greater slope. A lot of students don't know what that means. Just like, what does that mean? Okay. Basically, if you were to look at the slope from this angle, just looking straight on, you would see like a, say a ramp. And it's kind of like, I'll just try and do it slightly at an angle. Okay, it's like you'll see this ramp in front of you. Okay, that's angle alpha. And it's kind of like slanted. Okay. Now what it means is that the, um, the line of action of the force lies in a vertical plane that contains a line of greater slope. So the, the force is not acting like diagonally, it's acting straight up the slope. Vert it's like, you know, the, it's basically the shortest distance from here to here. The, the, the line of the force is acting straight up the slope, not at an angle. That's what it basically means. It's like acting straight up the slope, because we can't see that from here, because we're looking at it from side on. But if you looked at it from front on like this, it would, it would be going, the force would be going straight up, not at an angle. That's what it means. Okay, I hope you understand what, what I mean by that. But, you know, a lot of students just ignore that statement because it doesn't really affect your question in the end, but that's, how, that's what it actually means. Okay, then the coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is a half. So it says here, it's held in equilibrium. Okay, so let's say that uh, the thing wants to go down, right? The thing wants to go down, okay? So if the thing wants to go down, um, then friction would act up. If, however, that force is about to push it up, then friction would act down. So the, the friction really depends on what's happening. Just, just Let's just say that the, the particle is, I mean, we don't really need to find friction in the first part of the question, to be honest. Okay, because the first part of the question just says, find the, oops, the first part of the question just says, uh, find the reaction force, which is R. Let me just make it with an arrow, sorry. So the reaction force is R, which is always when a contact, uh, when a surface is in contact with another surface, is always a reaction force which acts perpendicular to the surface. So this is the reaction force. Now friction, depending on the situation, can either be acting up or down. If this thing is about to go up the plane, then friction would act down. If thing, this thing is about to slide down the plane, then this thing would go. Friction would act up. I'm going to just draw friction up for now because I'm assuming that the force P is just keeping it from sliding down. It's being kept in equilibrium by this force P, so the P is there just stopping it from sliding down. Okay, so I don't think we have to deal with the friction right now in terms of, um, yeah, in terms of part A. So we need to find the normal reaction between the particle and the plane. Okay, so now, um, all right, so what we got to do is we got to resolve the forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So I'm got, I've got the angle here. I know this angle is theta. Uh, sorry, alpha. This angle is definitely alpha. Okay, and that's because of similar triangles. So I'm just going to quickly explain this because a lot of students say, "Why is this alpha?" I don't know why this angle is alpha. I've just put it alpha there because that's what I was taught. Just that's alpha. Full stop. Basically, you have this triangle here. Okay, this triangle here, and this triangle here are similar triangles. Why are they similar triangles? Well, this triangle over here. Okay, let me just draw it in a different color. This triangle over here, okay, has got an angle alpha here and a right angle here. This triangle over here has an angle alpha here and also, no, it has, sorry, forget the alpha in this. We don't know the alpha yet. The alpha will come later. It has a right angle here, okay? Now, this big triangle here has this angle, and this little triangle here, here also has this angle here. They both share the same angle. Okay, so the big triangle has got alpha and this angle, and the little tri so it has got um, this right angle, sorry, and this, this angle, and the little triangle has this right angle and this angle. That means this, this angle that's left over must be the same in both of them, because they both have this angle that's the same in both of them and 90 degrees in them. Therefore, this must be alpha by similarity. Okay, so that's the reason why that's alpha by similarity. Okay, so just a little side point there. For those of you who are not sure why, that angle, we always call it alpha. Okay, so it's just a little uh, side point. Okay, so that angle there is alpha. So if I want to resolve this force in the direction um, which is perpendicular to the plane, 
okay, which is perpendicular to the plane, then it's going to go in, in this direction here. That's going to be 10g. As I'm going into the angle, when the ten, when I if I have to resolve this in this direction, then this this goes into the angle that's given. You can see it goes into the angle that's given. That's going to be 10g cosine alpha. And if I have to resolve in the direction which is parallel to the plane, okay, as you can see, this force has to go away from the angle given. It's going away from the angle given. Therefore, that's 10g sine alpha. That's a nice, easy way to do with that. So that force is 10g sine alpha. Okay. So now, if I want to find what R is, I want to resolve my forces perpendicular to the plane. So that's what the arrow means. So I know that R is equal to 10g times cosine alpha okay and we already worked out cosine alpha is equal to four fifths so it's 10g times four fifths 10g times four fifths five cancels with the 10 gives you two that's going to be 8g newtons so i can leave my answer here there's no problem if i leave my answer as 8g newtons or if I multiply 8 by 9.8, not you keep it to 9.8 for LXL um, M1, that gives you 78.4 newtons. Okay, I can even write it at 78 newtons to, to 2SF because um, we've used G in this question. Okay, but you leave it as 8G newtons or 78.4 newtons, it's perfectly fine. It's safer to keep things to 3SF rather than 2SF, because 3SF is acceptable in all cases, okay, and um, um, 2SF is only acceptable when you've used G. Sometimes you might get mixed up, so using 3SF is a safer option. So that's part A, okay, it took a bit of time to explain it, because I wanted to just go through some important points. Okay, so that's part A, now I'm going to go on to part B, and I'll use the same uh, diagram here that I've got. Okay, now part B. It says find the greatest possible value of p and this is where the friction comes into play here <clears throat> now the greatest possible value of p is going to be when p is such that this thing is just about to slide um up the plane okay because p could be two things p could be a value which is such that the um particle is just kept from sliding down the plane okay or p could be such that it's pulling it up the plane and it's just about to slide up the plane so the greatest possible value of p would be the value of p such that this is just about to slide up the plane because remember this thing is an equilibrium here it's an equilibrium as it says here okay it says that um you know it's held in equilibrium okay so for us for p to be the greatest value it can be and for this still to be in equilibrium it's going to be on the point of sliding up the plane. Now, if it's on the point of sliding up the plane, what's stopping it is the friction, which is acting down the plane. Okay, so in this case, the friction will be acting down the plane. And in addition, and in addition, that friction would have reached its maximum possible value. It will be in the, it will be in limiting equilibrium. It's at the limit of its equilibrium. When it's at the limit of its equilibrium, then F would be equal f max it's maximum possible value okay and we know that f max is given by the formula mu r okay and we know in the question that they gave us mu is a half and we found r what was r again we just found it a minute ago it was 8g i'll leave it as 8g for now r is 8g newtons so i can say that f max the maximum value friction that can take place here is a half times 8g which is 4g newtons so i know that this is definitely 4g newtons here acting down the plane okay i know that's for sure 4g newtons because it's at the limit of its equilibrium f max has been achieved and p if it goes any higher than that then it's going to start sliding up the plane okay so if i resolve the forces parallel to the plane i have p acting up the plane and it's equal to because it's still in equilibrium um 10 g sine alpha plus f max and i know what both of these things are sine alpha if you remember from what we just did before the sine alpha is three fifths okay so sine alpha is three fifths so it's 10 g 
times three fifths plus F max, which we just worked out is four G newtons. Okay, so this cancels with that, giving you two. So you're left with P equals, that's six G plus four G, six G plus four G, which is 10 G newtons. So we can leave it as that, or we can, like, we can write it as P equals 98 newtons. The, either of those are fine. 10 G newtons, 98 newtons. There's no problem with either of those answers. Okay, so that is part B. Now for part C. Now part C is kind of similar. Everything else is the same, but this time it says find the least possible value of P. Now the least possible value of P is going to be such that this thing is, P is just stopping it from sliding down the plane, right? So P doesn't have to be so big now. It's, it's not pulling it up the plane. It's just, it's not just about to pull it up the plane. It's just stopping it from sliding it down. So it's just enough to stop it from sliding. In that case, it's trying to slide down. So friction will be acting upwards, up the plane, because the thing is about to slide down. So F will be acting in this direction. So now what we can say, if we re resolve the forces in this direction, parallel to the plane, we can say this time P plus F, which has reached its maximum value because it's just about to slide um, down the plane and this is just stopping it. So F P plus F max is equal to 10 G sine alpha. Okay, so we can say P plus, now F max, remember, was 4 G newtons. P plus 4 G equals 10 G times, and we already got that as a half, uh, no, it wasn't a half, was it? It was 3 fifths, sorry. 10 G times 3 fifths. Okay, and so that gives us 6 G. So you got P equals 6 G minus 4 G, so P equals 2 G Newtons. And you can see that's the smallest value that it can be, which is 2 times 9.8, okay? So 2 times 9.8, you can write it in terms of um, what it is. That's going to give you 19.6 newtons. Okay, so you can write 19.6 newtons. You can write 2 G newtons. Both of them are perfectly fine. You could even write 20 newtons to 2 SF because we use G in the calculation. So th there we have the answer for question number 3. Okay, I hope that was clear. So you have two cases. One is the maximum value of P such that this will still be in equilibrium. It will be such that it's about to slide up the plane, just about to slide up the plane. So that means F max will have been achieved, but it will still be in equilibrium. So it will still be the upward forces equals the downward forces, but it's about to slide up the plane, so F max acts downwards. And the second case is the least possible value of P, where it's it's just about to slide down the plane and you've got you've just got P just enough to stop that happening. So as it's about to slide down, the friction will also be acting to stop it sliding down. And um, it's going to be in equilibrium, so the upward and the downward forces will be the same. Okay, so therefore, you know, you can work it out. You can see that this value is less than that value, which makes sense. And there we have the answer to this question number three. Um, other questions from this particular uh, paper will be found in this playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions from statics in um, M1 will be appearing in this area over here. You can subscribe to my channel clicking on this link. And on the top of the page, you'll see maybe a link to another past paper you might want to watch. Thank you for watching and see you soon.